Hey everybody, welcome back to Library Says. My name is Jamie and today I'm going to wrap up all 13 books I read in September. So if you've watched my August wrap up, you know I read 24 books and they were all romances. I just let myself read whatever I wanted and that is what it ended up being. But September I did diversify the genres and the type of books that I was reading and I read fewer but I read some really good stuff and some really not good stuff and I'm gonna tell you all about it. <laughs> I started off with a reread. I reread A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is such a quintessential fall read for me and I actually listed it in my fall recommendations video. If you haven't already checked that out, I'll link that up above. Go check out 13 different books that I really strongly recommend that you read during the fall. They've just got fall vibes <laughs> and this is one of them. So this follows Diana who is a witch who has basically turned her back on witches, on witchcraft, and refuses to practice until she accidentally calls up a magical manuscript in the Bodleian Library where she is a professor of the history of science at Oxford. And this manuscript has a long history and a lot of lore surrounding it and it has been missing for hundreds of years. And so when she calls it up, it sort of sets off an alarm across the entire magical world, not just witches but also vampires and demons. This gets the attention of Matthew Claremont, a vampire who also is working and living at Oxford, and it is the starting point for a long adventure. There's a quest, there's a lot of romance, and it's all exquisitely detailed and well researched and Deborah Harkness is in fact an academic um, and she knows what she's talking about and it's a wonderful series. Uh, this is the first of a three book trilogy and then there's also a spin-off novel as well with more coming in theory. I gave this reread four stars. Then I did read a romance by Victoria Dahl. It's called Taking the Heat. I'm not going to tell you anything about this one because it's for a vlog that I don't have out yet but stay tuned for that. <laughs> Sorry I'm being super enigmatic. And then I read another romance or uh, it's really erotica. Look at this cover. This is the firefighter dragon. I read this on a dare, a literal dare. A coworker and I decided to dare each other to read terrible romances. So she picked this for me and I made her read an Amish romance um, that takes place in Hawaii. <laughs> but I did read this. It was a struggle though to get through even though it's very short because the plot makes no sense. I don't care about the relationship. I don't care about the mythology. It's really just goofy. But a lot of people like it. I gave it two stars. <laughs> then I read Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is a horror thriller about a woman who lived in a haunted house for three weeks with her parents when she was a kid and they fled in the middle of the night. Then her father wrote a book about the experience that became a phenomenon like Amityville. And as an adult she does not believe it was haunted. She believes her parents are lying but she doesn't know what the truth is or why they would make it up. Um, and then her father dies and leaves her the house which she didn't even know he still owned. So she goes back to the house to fix it up to get it ready to sell and in the meantime is trying to figure out what actually happened in the three weeks she lived there with her parents. There are all sorts of shocking reveals. I had some things figured out and was blown away by others and the house is creepy. Like it is an excellent horror thriller combo. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time and I highly recommend it. I did give it four stars. And then I read probably my favorite thriller of the year which is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This book follows two women, one in 1982, one in 2017. Viv Delaney in 1982 is on her way to New York City to become an actress and stops and takes a job as the night clerk at a motel in a small town in upstate New York and one night during her shift she vanishes and she's never found and no one ever figures out what happened to her. Well in 2017 Carly, her niece, Viv's niece, quits school after her mother dies and decides to go to the town in New York where Viv disappeared, take the same job as a night clerk at the Sundown Motel and try and figure out what happened to Viv. This is a ghost story. There may or may not be a serial killer involved. It is a solid mystery but also a thriller, also horror elements, really interesting characters and dynamics and my favorite part of this whole thing is that there are two parallel timelines. You're bouncing back and forth between Viv and Carly's points of view and I never cared about one more than the other which is unique. I, I normally really only care about one storyline and just want to get back to it and in this case both are part of the story. You get parts of the story basically chronologically bouncing back and forth in a way that I thought was really well done. And I gave this one five stars. And then I read a YA thriller that I also really loved. It's called None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. So this is the first thriller like this I think Ellie Marnie has written. She has written mysteries and romance and stuff in the past, um, but this is quite different. This takes place in the 80s 
and surrounds the FBI. So if you've seen Mindhunter, you know about the creation of the BAU, the Behavior Analysis Unit that is early forensic psychology, right, that we now use, um, and profiling serial killers. And the whole idea of the BAU is that they started by interviewing convicted serial killers to get their thought processes and their backstories and how they came to be serial killers so they could then look for those things in future serial killers. Well, in this book, it's about, I think, 10 years after the BAU started. It's considered legit now, but there's a new idea that they want to start recruiting young people to interview juvenile serial killers, people who killed as under 18s. And so they recruit these two teens and we get both of their perspectives. A girl who is in college, who is the only survivor of a serial killer, and a boy who is, I think, in training to be a state marshal, if I remember correctly, um, also around college age, whose father was also a state marshal and was killed while trying to bring in a serial killer. And they get brought in to start interviewing serial killers. And that's how they meet Simon Gutmanson, a former serial killer known as the artist who lives in a hospital for the criminally insane and they start interviewing him and get dragged into an ongoing serial killer investigation that's happening in Pennsylvania very close by if you know anything about the FBI it's in Quantico which is in Virginia um, and so it is this wild mystery thriller Simon is such a fascinating character, and yes, a serial killer. We get the two perspectives, and we get the ongoing investigation with the interviews. It's just all so complex and so well done, and the characters are fantastic, and I kind of want this to be a series. Like, I want her to write more with these characters. I want them to continue to interview Simon. Uh, I just, I just had a blast reading it. I was so impressed with it, and I give it five stars. All right, then I flipped back to romance, and I read Dirty Empire. This is by Nina West, which is a pen name for for K.A. Tucker. This is the third book in her Dirty Empire series. Um, it was supposed to be the final book and then she announced that it's actually the third of four, so now we have to wait another year for the conclusion to this series. I read the first two books during my romance binge in August. I will link that up above if you want to check that out, my reviews of the rest of the series, but this was sort of okay. I'm interested to see how the conclusion actually wraps things up. I didn't know going in that it wasn't going to be the conclusion to the series and so I was let down and I also felt like the romance and the relationship and the physical elements that are so prevalent in the first two books were sort of put aside in this one um, for other elements of the story I didn't care about as much. So we'll see. I, I did give this one three stars and I'll definitely be reading the fourth and final book in the series when it comes out whenever it comes out. All right, then I read another thriller and this was One by One by Ruth Dare. I didn't like this book. Um, I've read one other novel by Ruth Dare. It was The Turn of the Key and I didn't like that one either. I know that's not a popular opinion, but this one sounded really interesting and I am always willing to give authors another shot and it just uh, didn't pay off. So I don't think Ruth Ware is for me, probably. This is about a bunch of coworkers who work for an app company, a music app where you can listen to other people's music in real time, like whatever they're listening to. Um, and they take a work retreat to a cabin in like the French Alps or something. And so it follows, I think there's six of them plus two staff that are working the cabin where they're staying. It was way too many characters. <laughs> and it's a locked room mystery where they start dropping off and you're trying to figure out who the killer is. I figured out the killer almost immediately. There were no twists, I didn't think. Um, none of the reveals seemed surprising at all. And like, if they were supposed to be surprising, they they just weren't. <laughs> I liked the being trapped in a cabin in the Alps thing, but it just wasn't utilized, I didn't think, that well. There, like I said, there are too many characters and it was hard to tell who was who or to care about them because I just didn't feel like I knew who was who well enough. So once they start dying, I'm like, okay, well that just means fewer people for me to keep track of. And we alternate between one of the staff people's points of view. Well, she's former, she doesn't work for the company anymore. And one of the staff for the cabin's point of view. Um, and every time we alternate between them, the start of the chapter has their Snoop profile, Snoop being the app where you can listen to other people's music, what they're listening to, their subscriber count, whatever, and I found it obnoxious. And I thought it would play a role at least in the book, but it didn't. Sorry, it's not a spoiler. I don't think it is, but it's not important and I'm not sure why it was included and it was 
dumb. Anyway, I was disappointed with this book. I gave it two stars. Then I read The House on the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Clune. This is a magical, quiet book about a man who works for a government organization where they go to orphanages for magical youth and make sure everything is okay. At the beginning, our main character gets sent to a special orphanage he's never heard of, which is unusual, with a bunch of kids that have basically been black bagged. Like, no one knows they exist and they're not supposed to, and this house is on an island in the middle of the sea, and they don't leave the island. One of the kids is supposed to be the Antichrist, and different things like that, like very unique, magical children. Our main character, has a lot of principles and a lot of ideas about the world that are questioned when he gets to this house and he meets Arthur who takes care of the kids and runs the, the, the home, the orphanage, and they start to develop a relationship. And it was cute. I loved the kids. I loved that part of it. It's a very quiet story though and it just didn't do a whole lot for me. It was very slow. It was mostly plotless, and while the characters were really vivid and interesting, the story itself just never really grabbed my attention, and I always found myself kind of drifting away from it and not wanting, not like jumping to pick it back up. So for that reason, I did give it three stars. Then I did a reread of the first three books of the Alpha and Omega series by Patricia Briggs. These are werewolf and other creature romances mostly. Um, each book has its own sort of mystery element. I highly recommend if you've never started the series, you read the prequel novella. I think it's just called Alpha and Omega. It is the foundation for the relationship that you follow the rest of the series. And I do not know if you haven't read it, how you could possibly know what was going on or care about the characters at all if you just dove into book one. I'm not sure why she did it that way. But I reread the first three books. Um, I read the whole series, uh, everything that's out so far. Um, about this time last year and I really enjoyed them. Some are better than others but it's very comfortable and just I don't know an enjoyable read and werewolves and other creatures you know it's it was September it felt like the right kind of season for that sort of thing. The first book is called Cry Wolf and I gave it three stars. The second book is Hunting Ground and I gave it four stars and the third book is Fair Game and I gave it four stars as well. I might actually pick up book four and continue on with my reread of the series at some point um, but for now I just read those three. They were perfect for what I wanted right then and then I moved on. And then I read my very last book I read in September and it was a reread um, of a book that I hadn't read in probably 15 years. Um, I read it probably in 8th, 9th, maybe 10th grade. Um, and I reread it with a co-worker who also hadn't reread it since probably around the same time. And that is Blood and Chocolate by Annette Curtis Klaus. This book was published in the 90s. It is a pre-Twilight paranormal romance about werewolves. It is unlike any other werewolf series or book that I've read and the world is really different. It's very animalistic, it's very gritty, and it's very much a product of the 90s. It's about a female werewolf who starts a relationship with a human boy and that is very much a no-no. And the wild dynamics of her pack slash family, power dynamics, sexual dynamics, uh, family roles, all really interesting and weird. <laughs> This didn't quite hold up, but if you want to reread it or read it for the first time, I do recommend you do that. The movie is a travesty. They changed literally everything. I think the, a couple of the characters' names are literally the only thing that it has in common with the book. It doesn't take place in the same country as the book. The plot's different. The relationships are different. Just no. That's a no for me. <laughs> so I gave this one three stars. So that's it. Those are the 13 books I read in September. Let me know if you've read any of them, what you thought. Do you disagree with any of my opinions on these? I'm sure you do. Let me know in the comments down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye! <laughs>